Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Yang Sheng, and I work with Vox Media where I get to do cool things with data. Um, so one of the projects that we worked on was finding related content, um, and we used a couple of Python libraries for that. Um, so it was a pretty cool project, and basically I guess I'll start off by explaining a little bit about why we might want to do that. So say you're reading some news article and you get to the bottom of it um, and you don't really know very much about the topic at hand but you're interested in finding out more. Um, so conveniently with a lot of news articles you'll see like this section that has related articles um, where you can dive deeper into the topic and find out whatever other related pieces of news have been written about it. Um, so this was something that we wanted to build and basically automate so that you could generate it for all of the articles that we had. Um, so the sort of very basic approach that you could take to this is basically something like word count or TFIDF. Um, so TFIDF stands for term frequency inverse document frequency. And what it does is it takes into account um, how rare a word is in a given document versus its presence over a corpus of documents. So if a word is um, overly represented in one document as opposed to the corpus as a whole, then that word is probably more important in terms of determining the topics of that, docu of that article. Um, so you can use this and combine it with something like cosine similarity to determine which documents are more or less similar to each other. Um, but that's like a very sort of simple approach. Um, so we tried that a bit with some of our articles, but the results that it yielded weren't quite what we wanted. Um, and a lot of the, the document similarity basically just, like we did some simple evaluation um, and it didn't quite produce the similarity results we were interested in. So then we moved on to another approach, which is word to vec So word to vec is a neural probabilistic language model. Um, so basically what it does is it outputs each word as a set of features, and these are represented as vectors. Um, and it lets us find the relationships between words and articles. So the classic example of this is basically you can generate a word vector for, say, the word king, and you can subtract the vector for man and add the vector for woman, and you'll get back the word vector for queen. Uh, so this is a kind of, it's a cool way of representing relationships between words. And there's also another example of this is with um, country and capital vectors, which you can see here, like you have all the country vectors clustered on this side, and the capital vectors are clustered on this side. Um, so it's a nice, I guess this provides like a nice intuitive way of understanding word to vec. Um, and so I could go into a lot of detail about um, the exact way that word to vec works. So there's, there's actually two types of it, um, two flavors of implementations of it. So there's skipgram, which predicts the context from the word and it builds the word vectors from that, and then there's continuous bag of words, which predicts words from context, um, and again, it builds the word vectors from that. And if you want to read more about this, there's a couple papers written about it, um, and I have some links to that at the end of this presentation. So ultimately, we decided to use GenSim's implementation of word to vec um, and it's fairly simple, so I'll just kind of dive into how we did it. Um, so you can create a model pretty easily with like invoking this word to vec class, um, and then you pass in the articles that you're interested in analyzing, which is basically just a list of words, um, or it's actually lists of lists, um, and then you can specify things like the feature dimensions and the minimum number of times that the word should be in your corpus in order for you to take it account into your model. Um, so this min count basically, it limits the vocabulary size of your model. 
um, and the feature dimensions is basically the size of a word vector. Um, and then you can also specify parameters for parallelization depending on how you want to optimize it. Um, and so after you've created this model, you probably want to save it so that you can go back and train it again, basically like add more documents to your model. Um, and in our case, like we built up a system where we would read in new articles from a Kafka queue, and then every time there were new articles added, we would retrain, well, we would take the saved model, and then we would add in the new article on top of it and train it with the saved model. Um, and then another thing that is useful to kind of take a look at is um, the way that it gets stored. So basically, Words of X stores each model as a series of NumPy arrays. Um, and each array is of size, um, size, which is that size arg that was passed into the model. And basically, we have the vocabulary size, um, and if we multiply that by the number of feature dimensions, then, and then multiply it by like the float size, then we can kind of estimate how much memory gets used when we try to generate this model. Um, and this is useful depending on the size of your data set. And so this is basically just building the model so far. Um, and the next steps are to actually use that to find similar articles. So for word similarity, we can use word to vex most similar or similarity functions. Um, and then you can compare like how close these two words are in the vector space. And so for our purposes, um, we needed to extend word to vec to a corpus of articles. Um, so basically something like article to vec, where we, so we have this model, this existing model of um, feature vectors for each word. Um, and then let's say we're given a new article with and we'll just go ahead and clean it up a little bit, remove English stop words from this article. Um, then we can create a list of feature vectors for each word in the article based on this model that we already have. So what we end up is with this new list of vectors, um, and this is for each of the words in the article. And then from this, we basically, we want to create a summary feature vector of the entire article. So if we kind of break this down a little bit, we basically just want to take the mean of each of the features across all of the words in that article. Um, and then we'll end up with a summary article feature vector. And so we can do that pretty easily with the NumPy mean function. Um, take it across access zero. And then we, so we can store that, we can store the unit vector representation of that. Um, and again, like similar to the TF-IDF approach, we can use cosine similarity to find out which articles are more or less similar to each other. So cosine similarity is basically just the measurement of the angle between the vectors. Um, and you can kind of see a more visual explanation of this from the diagrams, um, where we have similar scores where the vectors have a very small angle between them, um, unrelated scores where the two vectors are orthogonal, and then opposite scores. Um, so basically what we did is we went through and calculated cosine similarity between all article vectors and for this, we were using scikit-learn's uh, implementation of cosine similarity. And then you basically just sort by all of these values and you get the top n similar articles. So there's a bit of code here that um, basically just goes through and finds the cosine similarity for each of them um, and then gets the sorted list of that. And so after that was done, we ended up caching the article similarity rankings in Redis. 
Um, and so this was pretty convenient where we just used the sorted set storage in Redis um, and then you can use Z range by set to get like a nice list of most similar articles, like the top 100 most similar articles. Um, and then using that, it was pretty easy to just build an API to get ranked articles. Um, so we built that up using Flask. It's actually just a very simple endpoint where there's a single, there's a single endpoint with um, the article ID and the top N articles, which you pass in as parameters. And then it just returns this JSON formatted list of ranked articles. Um, and then, so after all of this is done, we ended up building this Slack bot interface for it. Um, so this is this was more of like an internal tool where you can query, and we called this bot SimBot, so you can send it the URL of an article, and then also like the top N articles that you want to see, and then it displays that nicely in Slack. Um, so these are just like some nice things that we added on after we had the model built and stored. Um, so after all of this was done, we had to start looking into what worked and what didn't work. Um, so one way of evaluating it, which we were using was, it's, it's called online evaluation. So basically we have these similar articles that are recommended to users um, and we can look at the click-through rate for each of these recommended articles. Um, and in this case, we were basically storing that through this Slack bot. Like we were gathering that data and storing it in DynamoDB. Um, and so using that, we can try to look at reader interest and maybe figure out whether our recommendations make sense for users. Um, although there are obviously still potential issues because it's about reader interest, it's not necessarily about similarity. Um, so it, it depends on what you're interested in measuring, like what you want your model to target. Um, and then we also, of course, we just gathered feedback from everyone who used it. Um, and some of the things that they requested was like an emphasis on more recent articles instead of older ones. Um, and obviously this is all very dependent on audience. Like you might want to weight title words more than content words. Um, and then depending on the kind of content that you're looking at, um, like say if it's tech news, um, it might be more interesting to look at more recent articles instead of older ones. and um, other types of news, we might need like a longer historical overview. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much just an overview of the project that we worked on. Um, and I have some links to the Word to Vec papers. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much for a nice talk. Uh, we uh, haven't uh, received any questions yet, but we still have some time, so maybe you can you can ask if, if you if you are interested in this topic. Uh, I would maybe ask: uh, is 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 it somewhere online in some newspapers? Can we see it somewhere? This algorithm? Um, yeah. So the the algorithm, like if you go to the Gensim website, they also have they have like a lot of information about it, and there's a lot of explanations about how this works and since there's two ways of implementing words of egg with um, skip ram and continuous bag of words there's also like a lot of detailed descriptions of both of them yeah i can send some links if you're interested okay thank you very much i don't know maybe mm, there are no questions yet uh, if you want to ask later maybe you can do it uh, during the lunch uh, so thank you very much Thank you. We, um, sorry, we have a question. <laughs> two, two questions actually. Uh, what was your measurable KPI uh, in production? ATS, more page views. Uh, 
I, I don't know the, the shortcuts, the, the abbreviations. Yeah, the, the, the question is there. So I think the thing that we were interested in was um, more page views. So like we had, there were different audiences for this thing that we were building. So like there's um, one group of people is basically just general readers of news articles. And for them, the most important measure is probably page views. Um, and then we also had journalists who were using this tool and they were they were kind of more interested in using it to build like a longer historical storyline surrounding maybe one topic. Um, so for them, we ended up just getting like direct feedback from them about what they were interested in seeing. So it depended on the audience. 